Hey guys, how's it going? So it's been a couple of weeks since we've seen each other, and I am very excited to catch up with you. If you watched my last video, you'll know that I decided to take kind of a half step back from YouTube. Making a new video each week is a lot of work, and I want to start making more time for my art. I've also been feeling a little bit overwhelmed with social media in general, so I took a creative break last week to just make stuff. So without further ado, here's a week of art. So I actually sketched and inked this illustration the previous week, but I didn't have a chance to actually paint it until Monday. This little scene has been sitting in my finger for about a year now, and the characters actually started out as foxes. But I ended up deciding that the idea fit my character's bits and bobbles really well, and with Halloween coming up, I thought that a little candy illustration would, I don't know, be fun to paint. Of course, Bobbles is buying some autumn decor and some ingredients for a new pastry recipe, but our girl Bits, she loves her candy, and I thought it'd be fun for her to be, you know, sneaking a little candy bag into the cart. As always, it was delightful to bring out my dip pen. It's been a couple of months, and I just haven't made time for it. Since I decided to do the 100 scene studies challenge in gouache, I feel like I've, I don't know, kind of almost branded myself a bit on social media as a gouache artist, but for as often as I do reach for gouache, I would, I don't know, I'd honestly consider myself a little bit more of a mixed media artist. I really love playing around with different mediums and just kind of bouncing back and forth between them. I get bored very, very easily, so, so it's fun to just, you know, spice things up a little bit. You'll see later on in the video a medium that I'm just beginning to explore but haven't really shared with you yet. I really wanted this week to be an opportunity to get back into art without any distractions or outside influences. I follow a lot of different amazing artists on Instagram, but sometimes that flood of ideas can kind of drown out my own artistic voice and, I don't know, it leaves me feeling a little bit clueless about what kind of art I actually want to be creating. I did check my DMs a few times throughout the week, but for the most part, I avoided Instagram because I just wanted to reconnect with my art. I swear I worked a bit in every single sketchbook that I own. There's something about sketchbooks for me that just really spark my creativity and help me loosen up while I'm creating. It relieves all of the pressure of making my art perfect and allows me to just have fun. I know that that's a mindset thing, there's nothing special about the sketchbooks that I use, but I don't know, it switches me from creating to work mode to creating for fun mode. Anyways, I think my favorite part of this painting was the chalkboard sign in the candy rack. <laughs> I could literally paint chalkboard signs all day long. I like doing this little swoopy kind of dry brush technique to make the board look like previous letters have been erased. I ended up going back in towards the end to crisp up some of the line art that had gotten a little bit faded by the watercolor and the colored pencil. So on that same day, I started painting a spread of treat boxes and treat symbols? <laughs> Tokens? Imagery? I don't know. <laughs> Stuff in the family of treat boxes. I don't know if it's the autumn weather or the holidays coming or what, but I have been in the mood to paint baked goods. Painting food is very much a guilty pleasure for me, particularly desserts. <laughs> there are just so many unique textures in foods. I painted a treat box in a previous sketchbook last year, and I really felt up to the challenge again. I decided to paint not one, not two, but three treat boxes this time. I don't really count the box of chocolate chip cookies since it was, it was just one treat. But anyways, I've really been trying to pay more attention to composition on spreads like these that are just a bunch of objects on a page. I wanted there to be a flow to this page, which meant trying to balance out the boxes with smaller items like individual cookies or baking ingredients. I also wanted to try to pull all of the items together with one color palette like using this muted green for all of the boxes. Part of my reasoning for this is <laughs> simply aesthetic. I want to open my sketchbook up to this page and be like, yeah, that's a really nice spread. But another reason is that I've been really exploring the realm of art licensing, particularly things like surface pattern for fabrics and scrapbook papers, that kind of thing. I had that idea in mind when I was working on this page and thinking, how can I unify these individual items through color? Which items when grouped together would make a really nice pattern? 
Even with the individual boxes of treats, I tried to really plan out the compositions with basic shapes to kind of create some flow to them, and later on again with the values. So for the first day, I laid down a wash of light yellow over each item to give me a, a little bit of a base to work on. I also wanted to knock out several of the individual items for some practice before going into the big boy boxes. Not gonna lie, I was really freaking proud of how all the chocolate chip cookies turned out. Some more than others, of course, but overall I really liked how the textures and the colors looked. Legitimately, I think I stared at photos of chocolate chip cookies on Pinterest for like two hours while I was painting, observing how the edges are a little bit darker and more saturated from like the crispiness how there's a subtle circle just inside the overall shape where the dough kind of sinks in a bit, just staring at the peaks and valleys of cookies to understand how they look in different lighting situations. Cookies, man. Paint one and I guarantee you, it'll make you happy. And if not, well, I owe you a chocolate chip cookie, I guess. Also cinnamon sticks, that little swirly bit on the end. It's kind of challenging, but super fun. Lots of little dotty spotty bits over the whole thing. <laughs> mm, I love cinnamon. I did take a little bit of a break to finish cutting out some stickers, just to kind of give my hand a rest from the small detail painting, but I wanted to get as many items painted as I could on Monday so I could give each box the time that it needed. The day came to an end, and I was feeling really good about it. My dad and I went for a little fall walk to look at all the trees, and we came across this neat little patch of, like, wispy plant. I'm not sure what they're called, but it's really pretty, <laughs> so I brought one home. I also got an acorn with a cute little cap, but anyways, on to Tuesday. So I decided to dive into the most complicated box in terms of perspective first, that way it was just done. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to draw a box from this angle, but I did regret it as soon as I started painting. But I'm not gonna lie, my mind felt so much clearer while painting this week. Sometimes I get really fidgety and unfocused while painting if I've been kind of perusing on social media. My guess is it's an overstimulation thing probably, and by taking that overstimulation out of the equation, I, I was a lot more relaxed. <laughs> that being said, I do enjoy listening to something while I paint, and what I listen to greatly depends on what stage of the creative process I'm in. For things that require a lot of focus for me, I like to listen to kind of instrumental music, primarily soundtracks. <laughs> Studio Ghibli is always a favorite, but I've also really been into the Over the Garden Wall soundtrack lately. But for more intuitive stages like rendering, I really like listening to podcasts. So I rediscovered the Laura Horn Art Podcast last week, and let me tell ya, I binged those episodes. <laughs> For one, Laura and Richie have very fun accents, but it's also very lighthearted, yet inspirational. They talk about everything from running an art business, to taking photographs, to painting, to doing yoga. I don't know, it feels like sitting down with a couple of art pals for coffee, you know? I learn a lot, I laugh a lot, and it always puts me in a very good mood. I know a lot of artists talk about how much what they watch or listen to while they're working has a very big impact on what they're creating, and it is very, very true. So I really like creating cozy, kind of nostalgic artwork, so obviously I don't listen to true crime podcasts or heavy metal music while I'm painting. Not that I would listen to that anyways, but you know. <laughs> I try to tailor my intake to my output, if that makes any sense. I finished up all the little items at the bottom of the treat box page on Tuesday as well. After I saw how long the full box took me, I knew I would need that extra time on the other boxes. I gotta admit, I think that little Linzer cookie might be one of my favorites. I love painting jam, and I also had a lot of fun painting the powdered sugar on top of the cookie. Dry brush, baby! One of the things I really tried to focus on was not over-rendering. With food illustrations, I tend to kind of go ham on the realism, and there's nothing wrong with that, but for this page, I really wanted to keep things a little bit looser and more simplified. I also started a page in a different sketchbook, which unfortunately I couldn't film because my battery was dying, but more of that later. So Wednesday. It was very productive, but it was also kind of a weird day. I started off feeling extremely dizzy, so I had a bit of a late start to work. 
I painted another tree box as well as a scene study for the plants theme of my 100 scene studies challenge. By mid-afternoon, I had done my Bible study, had a yoga workout, had finished everything on my to-do list, and I was sitting there like, well, well, maybe I should, you know, look at the to-do list for the whole week and try to knock out a couple more things. But then I was like, you know what sounds fun? Another yoga practice. So I took some me time and did yoga again. <laughs> Small tangent, I did a half moon pose on my bad side without using my hand for balance, and I felt like an absolute beast. But anyways, I knew I was going to be spending the next day in the city with my mom, and I decided that taking some time to do some non-work things was okay. For being someone that talks a lot about work-life balance, <laughs> I struggle with it a lot. I don't know, maybe that's why I talk about it so much. I tend to beat myself up for not working as long as some people do, but then I also beat myself up if I get things done and have time left over. My brain is in such a productivity equals time mode, which isn't necessarily true. There's absolutely no reason to punish myself for doing something quickly. If I'm happy with the quality of the work, then it shouldn't really matter how long it took me to do. I don't know, maybe I'm a nutcase. Is this something y'all struggle with too? Because Surely I am not the only one who thinks like this. But anyways, so this scene study is from the movie This Beautiful Fantastic, which if you haven't watched it, you most definitely should. It is absolutely amazing. It has a ton of beautiful cinematography, fantastic actors. It's, it's great. Go watch it. As soon as I decided to do the plants theme, I was like, Yes, we are painting something from this movie. So this scene in particular with the greenhouse in the midground is so stunning. There's plants literally everywhere. But because I wanted to paint this at a pretty small scale, like a two-ish by four-ish, I knew I needed to simplify things a lot. There's a lot of plants literally everywhere in this scene and painting each one individually would probably have taken me the whole week. I wanted to have a bit of a Ghibli-esque kind of vibe to the painting. So I started off wet on wet, just blocking in really big shapes. Killing off the white of the paper really helps me to not get into the details right off the bat. There's a lot of variation in the greens of the reference image, so I spent a lot of time just observing and trying to group different shapes together. After the initial block in, it was simply building up a variety of different plants on top looser, hazier kinds of shapes in the background, and crisper, more defined shapes in the foreground. You don't have to paint every individual leaf to show the viewer, yes, this is, in fact, a plant. I really tried to approach this study from a kind of less is more mindset. Now, I didn't stick to the reference completely accurately. For one, I took out the characters to make the greenhouse stand out more, but also there was this really nice bit of wet on wet down at the bottom, where the light yellowy greens kind of fade into that dark patch. And in the photo, there's some greenery and a long stemmed plant over top of that. But I really liked that kind of blooming effect of the paint there and I decided to not cover it up. <laughs> I think it makes for a really nice cozy kind of place to look at since the rest of the piece is pretty busy. Unfortunately, my camera storage was full and cut off my footage about halfway through the painting of the flowers. So, you know. A warning would have been nice, but anyways, you'll see the final view at the end of the video. Along came Thursday, and honestly, it was a fantastic day. Good doctor's appointment, amazing lunch, there was truffle cheese toast, I'm a fan. Got a much needed haircut, which is also always fun. The shop I go to is full of really artsy, fun ladies, and I always have a good time. We had frozen yogurt, lots of good conversations. Yeah, all in all, it was a really great day. Now, Friday. I had planned things with my treat box page to where I would finish that page on Friday. Only one treat box left. I was a little bit pooped from the day before, so I was really thankful that I already had a solid plan for what I was going to be working on and thankful that it was going to be pretty chill. I thought that this one would take me the longest time to complete, but actually it ended up being the quickest. I guess by that point I kind of just knew exactly what shades I needed to mix and how to go about layering things, so I put on my podcast and just painted. <laughs> I was feeling really confident in rendering the different textures, and it ended up being a very relaxing and intuitive process. That's one of the things that I'm really trying to reconnect with in my art, 
being able to intuitively paint without looking at a reference photo. There's absolutely nothing wrong with looking at reference photos, but I also enjoy painting from imagination too. Studies are so helpful in that they teach us how to observe and understand what we're seeing, but I think I've grown a little bit dependent on reference photos this year. This page was really nice because each treat was my own idea. Yes, I had looked at dozens and dozens of inspiration photos, but I wasn't drawing directly from any of them. I had built up each individual item on my own. And because I didn't draw from any of them, I also couldn't paint from any of them. I had to trust in my own understanding of light and color to accurately render each thing. Oftentimes we as artists know a lot more than we think we do, but we're just not confident in our skills and often feel like imposters when we create. I think that's why I like working in a sketchbook so much is because it's where I feel like I create my most authentic work. Paintings start out as the messiest of sketches and become something that's mine. Towards the end of this treat box, I got a little bit restless. The weekend always gets me very fidgety and every week I have to take note of that, maybe go make some tea for a short break, then get back to it. I was very, very determined to finish these sketchbook pages. So finally, we can get a closer look at the animal paintings. So I've been noodling around with this idea for a while now to paint animals in a sort of kind of wood carved figurine style. I actually explored this idea earlier this year, or I don't know, maybe it was last year. I don't know, it does not matter. <laughs> I'd explored this idea a bit in a different sketchbook, but I really wanted to take it to the max and really show each individual plane of the face. This meant a lot of observing how different animals have different face planes. For instance, the shape of a deer's forehead is drastically different from the shape of, let's say, an owl's. Their brows create shadow shapes that are unique to them. This was also an opportunity to really explore light and color. How would each individual plane look in the light? How would the change of plane change the local color of the animal? I even ended up playing around a bit with adding some color vibrations such as blues and purples in the shadows. Towards the end with the final fox and the owl, I got a little bit explorative with adding some painted details. I mean, <laughs> obviously I'm painting these paintings, <laughs> but I had the thought that many carved figures have paint detailing too, like eyelashes painted to the lids on dolls. The owl I chose to paint is a boo book owl and they have a very distinctive ring of feathers around their eyes. I couldn't really carve out feathers, so instead I painted them to the planes. They don't shift in value with the planes, which was <laughs> an oversight on my part, but I still really like the way that they turned out. I ended up doing the same thing with the fox at the end and adding a few of those teardrop strokes. Friday afternoon brings us to a time of clay play. So earlier this year, I bought a block of air dry clay and some tools just to explore an entirely different medium of art. Up to this point, I've been entirely 2D with drawing and painting, but clay has given me the opportunity to explore form in a whole new way. A hands-on way, you might say. Of course, my go-to with sculpting is miniature food. <laughs> is anybody surprised by this? Once again, the texture. It entirely fascinates me. I don't know, man, it's, it's, it's just really cool. So I made a little crescent roll, some spiral roll things, <laughs> a cinnamon roll, and two loaves of bread. The other couple sculptures require a little bit of backstory. <laughs> so ever since I was a kid, we've had these little miniature squashy pumpkins and gourd autumn decorations. <laughs> And I would always play with these things, like, endlessly. Like dolls, but they're squash. So every single one of them had a personality, and I knew every bump and divot on these things. So I got to thinking, Maybe I could sculpt some of those little squashy things. Enter in Pumpkin Vine and Pumpy Gourd. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love sculpting bread, but I think these two turned out to be my favorites. There's so much personality in the textures of these kinds of squash. Sure, you could have your standard flawless orange pumpkin or yellow squash, or you can have a scratched up pumpkin with an extra long stem and a squash with little clusters of bumps and divots all over it. 
It had been several months since I'd last gotten the chance to play with clay, and it was truly a joy to just squish some stuff around for a while. All in all, it was a really great week. It was exactly the kind of creative reset that I was needing. With no admin work, I had time to just make things with no immediate purpose. Without scrolling on social media, I had <laughs> a lot of extra time. I mean, a lot of extra time. My dad and I took a lot of walks and found lots of neat little naturey things that I'm sure will inspire future artwork. <laughs> I'm very thankful that my job allows me the flexibility to just take a break sometimes and simply create for fun. Going forward, I'm thinking about alternating weeks for creativity and admin work. Oftentimes, if I also have administrative stuff to do, it puts me in the wrong headspace for creating. So maybe having some sort of block schedule would be a better idea. I don't know, just something I'm thinking about. Anywho, I have several new items up in my Etsy shop, so if you're looking to do a bit of Christmas shopping... I've also added several smaller items for fun little stocking stuffers, and of course there's always prints and originals up as well. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you had fun exploring a week of art with me, and I hope you're having a wonderful week as well. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye guys!